Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Digital Services, Proven E-Commerce Strategies to Attract and Retain New Clients. I'm Jolene Carey Pace, the Program Coordinator at the Wilkes University Small Business Development Center, and I'm so happy that all of you could join us this afternoon. Uh, before we begin, I would like to thank Cassandra Fly, Management Consultant from the University of Pittsburgh SBDC, for sharing her presentation today. The University of Pittsburgh is one of the SBDC centers of excellence, uh, specifically in information technology. Just a quick note to please put yourselves on mute so that we can avoid having any background noise. Also, as we go along, you can type any questions that you might have into the chat box, as there will be time at the end of the presentation to ask questions. And now I will hand it over to Cassie. Thank you. Thanks, Jolene, and thanks everyone for coming today. I'm really excited to present this because we've done this program a few times um, at the University of Pittsburgh, but some other um, SBDCs around Pennsylvania and our entrepreneurs and small business owners have really gotten a lot. Like tell me, tell me, tell me um, if you could mute things. yourself, I think there's some background. Thank you. Um, and so we're really excited to present because we've gotten some really good feedback from our small business owners and our entrepreneurs on how going over these, um, going over search engine optimization and some of the tips we'll give you today has helped to drive e-commerce and more quality traffic to your website, as well as in return, increase your sales for your small business. Um, so we're really excited to present on that and get started. If you have any questions, as Jolene mentioned, please place them in the chat and she will stop me to answer any questions we have as we go along. So as I mentioned, um, I work at the Small Business Development Center at the University of Pittsburgh um, and we're presenting in, co in uh, connection with um, Small Business Development Center. So to give you an idea of where we're located, this is Wilkes and this is Pittsburgh. And so if your business ever moves um, to another area of the state, just know there's probably a small business development center near you that can help you. Now, we at the small business development centers can help with a number of things. If you're a new entrepreneur and you're thinking of starting a business, uh, we can help with startup assistance and looking at what are the to-dos that you need in order to start a business in PA, um, and maybe how to help write a business plan for starting your business. We can also help entrepreneurs who are already in business, maybe with growth planning or strategic planning, or helping to reevaluate their marketing plan or any number of things. We can also help with finding funding for you. So if you're needing some financial assistance, we can help look at and evaluate what funding opportunities might be available for you and which are going to be best for what you're looking for. We can also help with government marketing. So if you're looking to uh, market to the government and sell items to the government, we can help you with that and getting some more information on that. We can also help with international trade. So if your business is looking to sell products or services outside of the U.S., we can help you with that. We have on our team at the University of Pittsburgh, um, we have an international sales consultant who can help with that. And we also have on our team at the University of Pittsburgh um, an environment, environmental management um, consultant as well. So we can also help with if your business has maybe some environmental concerns, maybe your business has some environmentally, uh, environmental regulations in regards to your waste for your business. Um, we can also help with um, technical product development. Uh, so there are a number of things that the small business development centers can help you with all the way from starting a business in PA to growing your business to expanding, we can help. So if you have any questions about those programs or those opportunities for growth, you can contact Wilkes, your small business development center 
and um, whichever small business development centers near you. So as Jolene mentioned, um, we at the University of Pittsburgh are one of the small one of the centers of excellence. So there are different centers of excellence that specialize in different areas located around Pittsburgh. One is agriculture. We also have digital services, which is the one that we specialize in at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, there is health and life sciences, Latino, tourism and hospitality and growth wheel. And today, like I said, we're going to focus on our center of excellence, which is digital services. In digital services, what we do and what we can offer is focusing on how we can look at your digital presence and looking at your website and how we can help you improve that so that you can gain more traffic to your website, more quality traffic to your website, and to help grow sales in return. And one of the ways that we can do this, the University of Pittsburgh, is we can run a SEO analysis for you or a search engine optimization analysis for you. And so after we do that, we create a report and then we review it with you. And in that report, we can give you some tips on how to increase um, traffic to your website and how to optimize your website so that's more effective and gets a lot more traffic. So now I want to dive into what we're going to talk about today. So our agenda starts out with what is the definition of an effective website and what are some of those things that makes an effective website. After that, we'll talk about the basic costs and the time to implement some of the more popular web platforms that small businesses use. After that, we'll talk about um, SEO or search engine optimization. And those will be the tips on how to attract uh, more traffic to your website. And then we'll finish up with social media. And again, as I go through the presentation, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat and Jolene will stop me. So first, what defines an effective website? And I wanna ask that to everyone. If everyone could post in the chat just a couple words or a, a phrase of what do you think defines an effective website? I just kinda of wanna get uh, your minds thinking, um, kind of warm us up before we get into the presentation. Informative, yep. Thanks, Peggy. Easy to read, yep. Easy to use, yep. Attractive, how to contact, yep, mm -hmm. perfect. I'll take just a one or two more. Any other guesses? These are all good, by the way. One that keeps viewers attention through to action. Perfect, yeah, all the way, keeps viewers attention all the way to the purchase. Perfect, thanks everyone. Okay, so before you even start making a website, in, in order to make an effective website, you need to know who your customer is. So you need to look at who your customer is and really hone in on that target market. Now, a lot of small business owners think that starting out that their business is everyone. It could be anyone, right? But you really shouldn't necessarily try to target everyone because that's very expensive to try to target everyone. And the way that small businesses can effectively compete with large ones is by targeting a niche market. Um, take, for example, let me give an example. So if you have severe back pain and you go online and you search for psychotherapists and you find one psychotherapist that is called active fit psychotherapy and they're a generalist psychotherapist that specializes in all type of pain. But then you look again and you see another website and a company that's called spine experts back pain specialist that specialize in specifically back pain. Well, then given your problem, severe back pain, which one do you think that you're going to choose? 
well, probably the second one. And so it's important to, when you're writing messaging and you're creating a website to make sure you know who your customer is first and target that specific smaller group. Now that doesn't mean you can't sell to everyone. You can still sell to everyone past that small group, but you can be much more effective with your marketing dollars if you target that market that really connects with the services you offer. So a little deeper, just on getting to know your customer, you might think, well, then how do I get to know my customer? What are ways to describe them? Well, you should know their demographics, their, which would be like their age range, maybe their occupation or gender, um, their marital status. All of these things are good to know about your customers. Uh, additionally, it's good to know their psychographics. So what is their lifestyle? What do they care about? What are their values and their attitudes and opinions? What websites do they go on to search for information on products? These are all things you should know as well and can help you more clearly write an effective message on your website. And lastly, if you're selling to other businesses and you're trying to maybe develop a business to business customer profile, some things to consider are what industry are the businesses you typically sell to? What are the size of those firms that you typically sell to? Maybe they have quality or price or technology preferences. These are all things that can help you understand who your customer is so that you can write a more effective website. And after doing all, these research, all this research, you should have four basic questions answered. You should know who your existing customers are are, and then have a better idea of maybe those potential customers to reach out to on your website. You should know how to describe your press, your customers in a profile. Uh, you should understand where they go currently to get information about products and services. And then lastly, this should help confirm if you're offering the kinds of products and services that these customers are seeking. And if not, maybe you can tweak your offering, your product, or your service to better match that specific target market. All right, so I think we have a little bit of background noise. I think if you could mute yourself. Thank you. Um, so what to sell online and why is a website important for no matter what you're selling online? Well, you can sell products, you can sell services, you can sell information online. And products are important. It's important to have for your products because it offers the opportunity for you to have a customer going into the store. Like some of y'all mentioned earlier in the chat, you want it to be easy. I of you mentioned that it's all about the ease right and the convenience and so you want to sell you want to have a website that makes it easy to view the products the different colors the different features the different sizes of your products and so that's why it's very important to have a website for your products it's because you can show all that information very easily online on a website Next, it's also important for services, if you sell services, to have an online website because it also helps with the ease of selling your products. First, you can post testimonials about your product or your services. You can write description about your service and really a picture of what that service is going to look like and feel like and be like when they buy it. And then right after that, you can show a spot where they can book that service. So they've gotten a good picture of what that service is gonna be. And then there's that easy button to click to book your service. That is going to be very effective for helping you to increase your sales. And then lastly, you can sell information online. So maybe you have access to a lot of information that could be very pertinent to some customers out there. And it offers the opportunity for you to provide customized and branded resources or information to those clients as well. So no matter what you're selling, it's very useful to have an online website to make it easy and convenient for your customers. So 
Now we'll talk about what are the basic features of an effective website? Well, many of you mentioned it needs to be well-designed and easy to use, and it should walk you through the process, as I believe someone mentioned before we ended the chat, it should walk you from start to finish. So from finding out about the information about your products to the actual purchase of your product, it should be a nice flowy process and a really good way to do this. And I suggest all, let's see, I think we've got a little bit of background noise. Thank you. Um, so a good way to test this, and I suggest all business owners do this, is to have friends, family members, coworkers go through the website from start to finish and see how easy it is for them to use and get their honest feedback and ask them for their honest feedback because that is one of the most important things for your website. The second most important thing is it needs to be optimized for mobile. This is one of the things we check in um, those SEO reports as well. And we can tell you if it's optimized or not. Now, there has been several studies and one in particular, a build fire study shows that 82% of internet users in the US have used a mobile device to shop online. And 35% of them actually use it solely to shop online. So that shows that <clears throat> having your website optimized <clears throat> for mobile devices is very important in today's society. So next, it's important that your website has a fast load time. You do want to make sure that your website somewhere between one and four seconds or zero and four seconds um, and two to three is optimal to improve the usability and your search rankings for search engines. And this is also something we check in those SEO reports. So if you're interested in that, we can go over that in that SEO report. And the last basic feature of an effective website is to use organic search traffic and use or inbound marketing. And that's what we'll go into as the bulk of our presentation is that search engine optimization. Inbound marketing or organic search traffic basically means optimizing your website to attract users without, without advertising, advertising or without paying anyone. Now we'll go into the basic cost and time to implement the website. Let's see, I think I'm getting a little feedback. Um, Edmund, if you could maybe mute yourself, I think. Thank you. Okay. So basically some of the costs or some of the um, more popular websites out there for small businesses are Wix, Shopify, WordPress. Um, there's some others as well, like Weebly, um, GoDaddy and Squarespace. Let's see, I think I'm getting some an error on my computer. Okay, so Wix, Shopify, WordPress, Weebly, GoDaddy, Squarespace, those are some of the popular web platforms that are currently out there. And these list um, some of the prices of them. So they're reasonable for small businesses to get starting out, even at some of the more advanced, um, more some of the more advanced platforms of them. And for the time that it costs to implement, we do recommend if you don't have a full-time marketing person uh, to go ahead and try starting and making one yourself because it's definitely doable. There are definitely how to, there's a how to for all of these website platforms that walk you through the steps for making the website. And the benefit of making it yourself is you understand it. And, then if you ever need to go back and fix something or update something on your website, which you surely will, then you don't have to go back to that person that helped you set it up and you can do it yourself, which is invaluable um, for going back on a regular basis to work on your SEO on the back end. And so now I want to discuss kind of the bulk of our presentation, which is search engine optimization or SEO. So first, what is 
search engine optimization or what is SEO? Well, it is basically the practice of increasing your organic traffic or your non-paid traffic to your website. So it's the practice of getting traffic to your website without paid advertising and making your website the best that it can be. Um, organic search results are also considered more credible than those with advertising and they receive more clicks than those with paid advertising. Um, some of the cons associated with SEO is that it could take a little bit longer um, and the results uh, might be a little unpredictable if you haven't done it properly, but that's something we can help you with um, using those search or using the search engine optimization reports that we run. And so now that you know a little bit of what search engine optimization is, I want to show you that difference between paid and inorganic or inorganic and organic search results. So whenever you go to a search engine like Google and you type something in the search bar, it pulls up this list of different websites. That list of different websites is called a search engine results page or a SERP, which we'll refer to throughout the presentation. So on this search engine results page, you can see on the left, there's a few that have ad next to it. And then there's one at the bottom that doesn't have ad next to it. So the ones at the top that say ad are those paid inorganic search results. And the one at the bottom is the non-paid organic search result. So those that are organic, like this one at the bottom, actually receive more clicks um, and they're more credible than these up here. And so what I'm going to talk about is how you can optimize your website to show at the top of this list right here so you can get more clicks to your website. So now I want to talk about how a search engine works or how does your website get from your website to here and how does it show up higher on this list? So I wanna go over four terms that will help you understand this. SERP or a search engine results page is what we just went over, this right here, this list of websites. And Google's ultimate goal or search engine's ultimate goal is to rank websites in order of most important or most relevant on those search engine results page. And that's what's called ranking. So Google and search engines rank your website and other websites on search engine result pages. And the way to get a higher ranking on those search engine results pages is through paid advertising and SEO, but really SEO because those are the credible ones and receive a lot more clicks. So how do you get ranked higher on these search engine results page pages? Well, there are two things. There's crawling and indexing. Now crawling basically means searching and searching through websites and indexing is an essentially another word for saving. So first what happens is these little bugs of different search engines or the little bugs of Google essentially crawl through your website to find out and discover what your website is all about and understand the content that's on your website. And once they have crawled through your website, they then will save or index your page, therefore the word indexing, so they'll index your page and save it on their larger database. Now, when someone goes into a search engine looking for something and types in ice cream food truck in Pittsburgh, well then Google will then go through all the saved or indexed pages that it found and it will find what is most relevant and post it or rank it on the search engine results page. So that's how the process works and how a search engine works on the back end. So next I want to talk about, well, how do we do that? How do we essentially optimize our content on our websites and optimize our websites 
so that you can appear higher on those search engine results pages. And there are three main ways that you can do that. And those ways we also go over in more detail in those search engine results reports that we run or those um, SEO reports that we run. So the three different ways are one, contact or content, two, backlinks, and three, keywords and tags. So first going over the first one is content. So in order to optimize your website, you really want to include quality up-to-date content. And that means making sure that your content is updated on a regular basis and that it is um, it has relevant keywords in it and it has a logical uh, and it reads logically. So you want to make sure that you've reviewed your content so that it's easy to read, that it has a lot of terms that are very relevant to your business. So for example, if I am an ice cream food truck in Pittsburgh, I might want to talk about, you know, vegan ice cream that I have, the different flavors of ice cream that I have. But if I'm also interested in Pittsburgh sports and I post a lot of stuff about them and, you know, maybe I have some daily specials on the days that the Pittsburgh Penguins play. Well, I don't want to put too much content on that because it takes away from the relevant content of what you're selling, the ice cream and the food truck. So make sure that your content is heavy on what you're actually selling and that it is up to date and you're regularly updating it so that users and search engines don't get confused. Next, you want to include backlinks and as many backlinks as you can. Now, let me give you an example of what a backlink is. So for example, the CDC has, has a lot of backlinks right now. And the reason is because whenever the CDC, or say whenever a restaurant posts on their own website that they follow CDC guidelines and they include a link to the CDC's website, that's considered a backlink. And so there are a lot of companies, a lot of businesses right now that have the CDC's website posted on their own. And that drives a ton of traffic to the CDC's website. So that is an example of a backlink. And it is important to try to get more backlinks or links of your website on other websites. Now, if you're curious for different ways to do that and different strategies for increasing your backlinks, a very easy way to do this is simply to search how to increase my backlinks. And you will get tons of different ideas on how to do that. And you can pick and choose which ones will be very effective, more effective for your business. And so I would recommend to spend some time doing that and just searching for ways that you could try to increase your backlinks because they are very important for increasing your search engine optimization. Now, the last main strategy that I'll talk about are keywords and tags. So keywords, are words that people search regularly on Google or Bing or search engines. So for example, a popular keyword might be used cars in Pittsburgh. But um, a, then it should give an example of maybe a good keyword versus a poor keyword is if you are a used car salesman in the Mount Oliver area of Pittsburgh, and you use the keyword car on your website. Well, that's not gonna be as effective as if you maybe put used car sales Mount Oliver area. That's gonna be a very relevant keyword to use. And it's good to develop a keyword strategy and kind of come up with a list of different keywords that can help uh, increase your traffic and that are very relevant to what people are currently searching in those search engines. And that's also something we can help review with you in this SEO reports that we run. Now, for where to post those keywords, it's good to post those keywords in the content of your website, 
but there are a couple other places that we recommend putting those keywords. And one of those areas is the title tags and also the meta descriptions. And that's something we can review um, in those SEO reports. But if you have a website, there is a section that shows you title tags and meta descriptions. And you need to try to implement the keywords there if you can, because it helps um, crawlers and bots notice your website and know what your website is about. Now, I just wanna back up a second and look at why SEO is important again. Now, SEO is important because it's oftentimes the first place that people go to search for information and to search for products. I know when I look online for something or when I, when I have a question about a product I'm thinking of buying, I always go to my phone and I always search for it first on the website, typically before even asking someone about it, I go online. Um, also SEO is important because the top five positions on a search engine results page help to increase your traffic, but also, um, if you do SEO or organic search results, it will generate 20% more traffic than paid advertisements. So that's just a couple things to keep in mind when you're thinking, why is SEO or organic search important for me versus paid advertising? Now I want to review just a few common myths about search engine optimization and SEO. So one of the myths is that keyword density helps improve page ranking. And what I mean by that is that if you try to put a bunch of keywords or stuff a bunch of keywords into your website, and say you're an ice cream food truck in Pittsburgh and you put in your content, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, Pittsburgh, 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 well, Google is going to recognize that you are just stuffing keywords and they will actually take you off of their um, search engine. So you don't want to just stuff keywords in there in a way that's not logical because Google will recognize that and you really don't want to make Google mad. So don't do that. Um, another common myth is that social signals are a ranking factor. And what I mean by social signals are likes or shares on Facebook, for example. Uh, those do not necessarily, those do not play a role in the ranking factor for search engine result pages. Although it can help you understand your following and how popular your um, social media pages are and how engaged your customers are, it's not a ranking factor for search engine results pages. Another common myth is that links don't matter. Well, as we just mentioned, when we looked at the, the uh, CDC example, links do matter. They do matter a lot and it can really drive a lot of traffic to your website. And so it's very good to have a backlink strategy for increasing your backlinks. Another common myth is that content does not matter. And like mentioned earlier, content does matter. It's important to have um, quality content and then it's easy to read content. And in, it's important to have content that is up to date. People get very frustrated if they go to a website and what is on their website is not true for when they go in store to in person to the store it can be very frustrating. So make sure your content is up to date and quality. Okay, so another, another common myth is that SEO is a one-time activity. No, SEO really should be more of like a every six months, every year um, strategy. So you want to go ahead and set a few goals and look at your SEO and then come back to them six months later or a year later to see um, how it's improved. And the timing of going back and looking at your SEO can be different for each business. So maybe for some businesses, it's every three months, every two months, but then maybe other businesses, it's every six months, every year. Um, it just depends on how often your content is changing on your website. 
So next, another myth is that only the number one position matters in Google. So on those search engine results pages, although the number one position does give you 33% more traffic, um, it is not necessarily the only one that matters. Uh, people definitely click on the ones below it and it gives you a ton more traffic if you're on just the first page alone. Um, but even some on the second page and third page as well. So don't think that just that number one position matters. Uh, the next myth is that you can buy backlinks. Um, you really should not buy backlinks because that's considered a poor SEO traffic and uh, the search engines like Google will flag you for it. Um, so don't buy backlinks. If you ever get advertisements for buying backlinks, don't go for them. Um, and then the last common myth is that Google ads will increase your rankings. Well, they don't really. Organic search results is what increases your rankings and increases your traffic even more than ads. And so it's important, as we've already spoken, to really look at optimizing your website for that organic traffic first before you get into ads. So kind of like the last piece is going into social media and how, why it's important and how you can optimize it for your site as well. So first, well, why is social media important? I think a lot of small business owners think like, that sounds like it takes a lot of time. Why is it important? Well, just a few stats currently 3.5 billion people use social media, and that is a large chunk of the world population. Uh, Facebook alone is used by two thirds of the U of US adults, and 75% of those U adults uh, use it daily. So not only is it used by many, many people, it's also a very inexpensive way to promote your business. It's free unless you wanna do paid advertising it is completely free. And it also cultivates and engages your current customer base and gives an opportunity to improve customer insight to your products and your services and your overall business image. And so that's a few reasons just why social media can be very important. Now, it's probably not the best idea to go ahead, start your website, and then get on every single social media channel out there because not every social media channel might fit well with your website or what you sell or with your target customer. And so going back to what you mentioned in the first slide is you need to know your customer before you create a website. Well, you shouldn't get to know your customer and what websites and what social media platforms they're on before you choose your social media platforms. Um, this will save you a lot of time and energy if maybe you don't need to be on every single social media site. Um, for example, different generations prefer different media outlets and different social media platforms more than others. So if your customer base is mainly Generation Z, well then maybe you should choose to be on some of those more image and video driven content sites like YouTube or TikTok or Snapchat. Whereas if your main customer base is baby boomers, then you should focus more on Facebook, which is more of a content, a written content driven website and platform. So it's important to once again, get an idea of who your customers are and understand them before you choose which social media platforms. So we just went over the first step here, identify and understand who your audience is, but also when you're choosing which channels to be on, it's important to find your audience. So look at what platforms and websites they're already on, and then look at how often do they use that? So for example, while young Facebook users that are more Generation Z might have profiles on Facebook, they're actually more active on Instagram. So consider how often they use it, consider what times they use it. You know, if they use it more in the morning, then you know when to post. Um, if they use it more in the evening, then you know to post in the evening. 
um, and then ask how do they use that platform. So for example, maybe um, your customers use YouTube primarily for looking up how-to videos, whereas maybe your other set of customers might use it primarily just for watching YouTube videos or music videos and viral videos. So these are all things to consider when you're looking at your audience and finding where they are online. And then lastly, you might choose a channel, um, choose your channels differently based on what your goals are. So there are certain, you, or there are certain channels that are better for different goals. Um, so consider, are you trying to drive sales or are you trying to just grow recognition of your brand right now? Well, you might choose a channel differently based on that. And you might make your posts differently based on that. So consider your goals, write them down. And then every two, three months, go back to those goals and see maybe look at kind of what you're seeing and see where you can change and adjust some things and see if maybe the channel that you initially were on is one that you can maybe get rid of and get on a different one. Um, it is good to go back and look at your goals and see where you can make some changes. So this goes with social media and your website. That's important for your business. And that is to tell your story. So it's important for you as a business owner, especially small business owner, to tell your story to your customers. Um, there's a gentleman uh, who's a small business owner, Tom Pemberton. He's a dairy farmer. And he had the idea to create a YouTube channel that was the day in the life of a dairy farmer. And a lot of his customers really resonated with this because they got to see the love he has for his business, for his animals, and the quality of his ingredients for um, his different products. And it gave quite a few laughs as well. And he really got a large customer base because of it. And his sales increased dramatically simply because he really shared his story and shared what he was passionate about. And it's important for you as a small business owner to think of ways that you can share your story and share what you're passionate about as a small business owner with your business. So if it is maybe your five-year anniversary, we'll celebrate and throw a party where um, you can bring customers in for discounts, maybe at your restaurant or maybe on, maybe you're a sports enthusiast and you really support your um, local sports team well, then every time the local sports team plays, maybe you have a um, special gathering with discounts or maybe some of the proceeds go to a local sports team um, for Little League. And sharing those kinds of things really do resonate with your customers and can help not only um, build your customer base, but build deeper deeper connections with your current customer base and increase your sales dramatically. And then lastly, looking at cross promotion. So it's important on your website to post all the different links and um, icons to your different social media platforms so that those who maybe prefer one platform over the other can go learn about your business on the platform that they prefer. Also, it's a good idea um, to connect with other businesses and, and cross promote an event. So for example, if there's a nearby organization doing a Veterans Day event and you support veterans through your business, um, maybe you can post about that event on your site and social media as well. And so that's another idea of cross promotion. And so that kind of wraps up our presentation, but I did want to review once more that SEO report that we can run and what it entails so that you have a better idea. That SEO report gives a first a high level overview of how your website is doing and kind of gives it a score with the test results. And then it looks at your website design, design and kind of how accessible it is to people and easy to use it is for people. 
It looks at um, if your website is optimized and accessible to those with maybe some disabilities. Um, we also run a browser capability test to see how well it works and performs across different browsers. Um, we then dig deeper into search engine optimization and look at keyword strategy for your business and backlinks and we give you an SEO score. Um, and then we look at your social media and how you're managing it. And then after that, lastly, lastly, we go into the speed and security of your website to see, is it running up to speed? Maybe there are ways that you could um, better the speed and load time of your website and some ways on how to fix that. And then we end with a summary and some recommendations with some high priority and low priority fixes and tips on how to better your website. Now, if you're interested in this and you would like that run, you can reach out to Wilkes. Um, here's all of their contact information. You can reach out to them and we can get a time set up to run that report for you on your website. Um, that is the presentation I have for you today, uh, but that was a lot of talking. So does anyone have questions? awfully quiet today. <laughs> oh, here's a question. How do hashtags help or not? So hashtags don't necessarily, they're kind of like one of those social signals that I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the SEO miss. They don't necessarily improve your ranking. However, having hashtags to connect you um, to different parts of, or hashtags can help you with your activity and seeing how active you are on Facebook and Instagram and your different social media sites. So it can still help with building your customer base and building brand recognition, but it doesn't necessarily help with the actual ranking on search engine results pages. Let's see if I can pull up these. Let's see, regarding some of the detailed marketing info you mentioned, how do you recommend we gather that info? So that's probably a more extensive look at something to take a look into with your consultant. Um, there's definitely, I, I think it'd be very specific to your, it, it, there might be better recommendations with your consultant because then they can look at your specific business and how to better help there. Um, one other way is, through the SBDCs and I believe through Wilkes as well, you can get in touch with the library there and they have some resources through the library that can help you with that research. Um, so that, that would be something to probably reach out to your consultant with at Wilkes. And if you don't have a consultant, you can reach out to them and they can get you paired up with one, I'm sure. And then Cole mentioned, let's see, how much money should you be putting into SEO reports and at what point should you do that as far as how big your business is? So like I mentioned, the SEO report, actually maybe I didn't mention it, but the one that we run is actually free. So we can run an SEO report for you um, at first for free. And then if you're looking to maybe do a more in depth look at this and really like, like you're looking to hire someone to do more on the marketing side and do more on the like keyword um, strategy, um, then you might, you know, add that onto like a marketing person's job if you have a bigger business. But the SEO report we run can definitely like get you started and get a good idea of where you're at with SEO. Um, so it can be free at first. Oh, and who is the other Cassandra Fly? Sorry, um, I think both me and my coworker are on, and that's why there's two. Thanks, Lynn. I just introduced. I introduced myself in the chat. 
And Cassie, maybe talk about um, yeah. not only the benefit of the SEO report, but then the value of meeting with the consultant and the business owner to, you know, kind of dig deeply into the results of the report. Yeah. How we can assist them that way as well. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. I didn't really go through the process of, so what of that. So what you can do is you can reach out to Wilkes. They can get you set up with us running that report. Now, once we run that report, that's on SEO, we can can then meet with you and your consultant and review it together so that you can kind of get an understanding of the contents of that report. And you can ask specific questions about your business and how this report, you know, ties in with what you're thinking to do for your business. And so that gives the opportunity for you to ask specific questions on this report. So it's not just something that we run the report, give to you, and that's it. We meet with you to review it together so that you can understand it and see what are your next steps and what are your to-dos as far as your business and help you through that. Thanks, Lynn. I forgot about that. Any other questions? I think we still have a few minutes. 